He even faces you away from the Titanite Demon. The Titanite Demon actually has quite... You can get really fucking close to this thing before it, like, starts attacking you. There is an item behind it. I can't remember what it is. Um, I don't know if I want to find out. I don't really want to... This session's running a bit long, so I might just go to uh, the fateful end of this place. Yeah, pillage that corpse. Anything else around here other than wonky corners for the camera? So yeah, we are now clearly in a much more ornate, much uh, richer area of the... Oh, fuck off. Much richer area of the catacombs here, you know? It's, it's very clear that there were much more important people uh, buried in this, this area of the catacombs. And I do quite like the way that it tells that kind of story of like, you know, as you as you go deeper, you're clearly going somewhere much more important. That's one down. May have been a bad time to drink. They took a big wind up, so we're fine. Let's just beat the fuck out of this skeleton. So, you know, we're, we're clearly going somewhere a bit more important than we were before. Uh, there's also a little indents in the floor here, so you should you should know what that means by this point. And these ones have a particularly nasty surprise if you're not ready for it. So let's just uh, equip our A-game. It's another Black Knight. This one is actually wielding an axe. I kind of wish I had put on my uh, bigger shield for this. because this can take quite a lot of damage. Uh, I was gonna action equip there, but I went to the wrong menu, and you really have to be paying attention against these Black Knights. Of course, this axe is definitely quite heavy. Like, look at how, look at how slow and awkward that is. Even for these dudes that have already been established as gigantic badasses. Like, you want a way to give weight to weapons? Get the biggest, scariest enemies and have them have something that they have to actually swing kind of awkwardly. It's really good. We get a white knight, tight knight chunk and a soul of a proud knight for our troubles. We also get to uh, the bottom of these catacombs. And do you hear something? Because I hear something. I definitely hear something. These are the bone wheel skeletons. They're rather notorious for being huge pieces of shit. Can I hit him with that? I can. Even my sad, wimpy arm. Uh, they are fairly well known because they just absolutely destroy your stamina. I am playing with fire here, quite literally. I wonder if I can hit them if I switch what hand this is in. Uh, but basically, if they run into you with their with their spinning attacks that they're doing here, it will tear through your stamina. So, a large group of these guys is one of the most dangerous things in the game. And frankly, should be terminated with extreme prejudice. I have no idea where that one even went. Again, not a clue. I think I'm just gonna try and fall on this guy. Be really fucking careful around bone wheels. Like, probably more so than any other enemy. Especially if you're running from them and suddenly one of these dudes just fucking explodes in your face. Over in this corner... find more magical skeletons. And they are in fact the immortal kind, so let's go back to our trusty Morningstar. Oh. 
the necromancer was nice enough to even come right to us. I believe this is the last one that we have to deal with, although there is something that will confirm for us if that is the Fuck! Cakes. Oh, all my hard work. Wah wah. Maybe we'll need to find an alternate path here. I can't actually remember the exact way that I would want to go to get to that spot, though. I believe I would be able to fall down somewhere for that, but I can't remember exactly where. Poop. Oh, I guess we are going into a quote-unquote new area here. Uh... We will actually discover that this is the place where we fell down earlier. Can't remember if there's any items here or not. There are, however, explodey heads. So we're going to want to be really careful about that. I don't even know why that guy exploded. But hey, makes our life easier. I believe there are still some skeletons alive, unless all of them fell down. Which is, you know, that's possible. This is actually quite a tough encounter. I will, I will take it. So yeah, you'll see that there was actually supposed to be a bridge here, but that it kind of fell apart. You can also see there's an item down there. I think I could hit it, but uh, you know, I'm not going to chance it. The bottom of the catacombs can actually be quite awkward and annoying to get through, if we're being honest. I didn't even realize these things were skeleton controlled. Shit. I really should have been just equipping both weapons as I went along, but yeah. Right, so welcome back to Bone Wheel Town. This is unfortunately an area where you really can't, like, hurry this along. Wow, that exploded behind me, didn't it? This is not working great. Great, now they're even... Uh, well, goodbye, souls. I might have just killed all of them. Be really careful if you're gonna do that, though, because that won't always work the way you want it to. Get these two guys out of the way. Finally get my damn souls back. 
Yeah, this was really just a case of me being woefully underprepared for what was in this area. Funnily enough, I believe the Necromancer will actually chase you more than the other guy as well. One down. That's a lot of fire damage. Get fucked, pal. And we can finally pillage this one's body, which means we get a skull lantern. Oh! Hello there. I didn't even realize one of you had followed me. Please die. So yes, as I was saying, a skull lantern, which I believe is in our equips. Skull lantern of the catacombs necromancer droops from his long beard locks. This lantern alights the tomb of the giants, Nito's light devouring domain of death. Also serves as a fire damage strike weapon. So we connect these necromancers to uh, Nido, which, you know, kind of makes sense. Obviously, the necromancers would worship the skeleton man. But hey, it's good to have that kind of confirmation. Uh, let's see if we can find anything else interesting around here. I mean, fuck, we've been going on for over two hours already. I didn't realize the catacombs would take this long. <laughs> Maybe there's something else interesting to find. Oh, right, I always forget that there's actually a door out of this place. It really fucks me up, honestly. It's quite a fall. I know there's one more item I can get, but I have entirely forgotten how to get it. I mean, one more super important item I can get. I'll have to look that up, and we'll probably do that in another video. For now, we really just have one last thing left to do. Well... Given that sound I seem to be able to hear, maybe a few other things to do. Well, we'll definitely be back here. Yep, there's, there's definitely some banging going on around here, but we don't really have any way to get to it. So, I guess we'll just not worry about it, or that item over there. Bone wheels, though! Bone wheels you always worry about. They don't take much damage, but look at that! If one of these things catches you head on, it will just melt you. So watch the fuck out. But now we finally head through this in what is really the final path in the catacombs and come to a great white light and in this light we find a room except it's not really just a room it's more of a giant really giant tomb This is Pinwheel. He will clone himself and shoot you with fire. And boy howdy does it hurt.
Frankly, I would strongly recommend just not getting hit by it. Um, if you allow this fight to go on, he will make a lot of fucking clones of himself. So try to just kill him. Fast. Really fast. Because they can attack you. Um, I do believe everything will hurt. Like, if you attack any of them, you will be hurting the real pinwheel, though. That said, he appears to have stopped with all the cloning. You know, for now. Ugh. This fight can be extremely difficult if you do not have a powerful enough weapon. But, for beating it, you get quite a powerful reward. The clerics of Thurland were looking for the right of kindling. And it turns out this fucking guy had it all along. Or these guys? I'm not entirely sure. But we do get the Mask of the Mother. You can get all three of the masks that uh, Pinwheel has. Let's see. Right of kindling. The secret light allows bonfires to be bolstered further with kindling so that even more Estus can be collected. Kindling was a sacred rite, passed down among clerics, but all undead can imitate the process, in the same manner that they restore their hollowing with humanity. How peculiar that humans had found little use for humanity until they turned undead. I love the sort of, like, psychological musings of this. I love this implication that the clerics were looking for something that really is only especially useful to the undead. It's sort of, you know, despite all of their disdain for undead, for, for the undead themselves, they were looking for this rite of kindling to see if it was a way to help them through the curse. But in the end, it turns out it actually just, you know, makes bonfires stronger. But really... This is when it, you first start to see hints of the overall theme of the game. This sort of idea of, an, of you know, the secret right, this unnatural right to keep a flame alive. Uh, and you sort of even see it in what the Serpent Framped told us at the very, very start of this recording session. Well, not very, very. There was also all that egg shit. But, like... Frampt mentions that you are to replace, you are to become Lord Gwyn's successor, to light the fire, to prolong this age of fire. But if you read the item descriptions, if you see sort of like start to try to read between the lines, you're actually going to start to realize that maybe this is not a natural thing to keep the flame like, you know, like. If a rite like this that was being used by a three-headed monster like Pinwheel is the sort of thing that keeps a fire, that, that, that's going to keep this fire going, um, if, you know, in contradiction to what the prelude of the game itself said, that only embers remain, that all fires must eventually go dark, is it necessarily something that we want? And who exactly are the people that want it? It's a very subtle, very interesting thing that the game really plays with, but only if you're really looking for it. I believe we also got... It's, it's gonna be around here somewhere. Way at the bottom. Mask of the Mother. One of the three masks of Pinwheel, the necromancer who stole the power of the Grave Lord and reigns over the catacombs. This mask, belonging to the kindly mother, slightly raises HP. This has sort of disturbing implications about the nature of Pinwheel, because there are two other masks that Pinwheel can drop. The Mask of the Father, and the Mask of the Son. There's also an unwieldy pile of books here, and it's it's very clear that Nito, uh, or that this, this Pinwheel was not allied with Nito at all, and was in fact stealing from Nito. So, there's a lot of... 
weird creepiness associated with this. There's a lot of, you know, very clearly everything that was going on here was unholy. And what does that say about the rite of kindling? And what does that say about, you know, the nature of an undead curse? That something so unnatural seems to also, it seems to contain this power to keep the bonfires running. It's interesting, and I think we'll end the episode on that. So, I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.